Over the years, I've reviewed a number of Volvo Pent engines, from the D3 in a small Whitley trailer boat, up to the impressive D13 in the luxurious Maritimo M55 motor yacht. Now, things that always stood out to me is how efficient they are, but also how easy they are to use and integrate into the total boat management system. Now, today, we're looking at some D6 440As that have been recently refitted into this 4100 Noosa Cat. Let's get into it. The D6 can be had in 400 and 440 horsepower versions, with Volvo Penta's award-winning DPI Aquamatic Stern Drive, or IPS. At 5.5 litres, it's not a massive engine, and it makes impressive power using a turbocharger and common rail direct injection. It features double overhead camshafts to make an impressive over 1,000 newton metres of torque from only 1,750 RPM. A standout is how the engine seamlessly integrates with the EVC, or electronic vessel control. That means drive-by-wire binnacles, including a single throttle to control twin engines, and great tech like reduced throttle sensitivity for easy docking. It also integrates into a wide range of displays, so you can track engine data on your main screen. This vessel has been set up with DPS, or Digital Positioning System. Using GPS, it will lock you on a set position using the engine's full range of steering lock independently and the ability to run each engine in forward or reverse. It will hold you where you want. This is great for deep sea fishing or getting your ropes and fenders out before docking. The D6 can be optioned in both 12 and 24 volts, with up to 150 amp alternator output on the 12 volt option and up to 80 amps on the 24 volt option. The boat is a 4100 Deluxe Sports Fisher by Noosa Cat. Now it's not Brett the owner's first Noosa, he had a 39 before this, and he even had a 10.5, a different brand that he was repowering when the 4100 came up for sale. Now he had to jump at it, because he knew putting in these Volvos and knowing this hull, this was the perfect setup for what he wanted, which is deep sea sports fishing with his family. In terms of performance, I will put a table up, which I'll analyze, get the data into my head, and I'll do a voiceover on exactly where I see the sweet spots. But what I felt on the water was that around 3000 RPM was where it felt best. And it was burning around about a liter per two kilometers traveling, which is super impressive. Now what I also know is that these DPI stern drives, which this has, which is, works with the DPS system and the EVC, gotta love an acronym, bit into the water really well with the H6 props that are fitted. Now the guys have tried an H5 prop and they've got a little bit more top end, but they feel with the H6s, that's the sweet spot. For recreational use, the D6 is covered for 2,000 hours or two years, and for commercial use, the warranty is 12 months or 1,000 hours, whichever comes first. There is an option to extend warranties for up to four years, which understandably includes the requirement to service the engine through approved agents to schedule. Servicing the D6 440 like we have in the Noosa Cat is about what you'd expect. Every 12 months or 200 hours, you only need to have fuel filters replaced and an inspection of critical items. At 24 months or 500 hours, you need to replace the engine and transmission oils and filters along with a general inspection. The drive belt, which most of us consider a major service item, is due for replacement every 48 months or 800 hours. If you're in Queensland or Papua New Guinea, it's a no-brainer. They are the agents for Volvo Penta and have the sole distribution for cola generators. Now, the technicians through the dealer network are the right people to service your power plant, plus at the head office they have the guys on board there who will help you plan a repower like this or even a new build. Now CMEC are very focused on getting more people out boating on the water with Volvo Pentas and you'll find all the information you need on their website on cmec.com.au. So after our time on board with the D6440As, frankly very impressed. Particularly at wide open throttle, the amount of fuel that's used, considering this is an 11 ton boat, 44 foot, being that 160, 170 litres per hour, super impressive. Now what you won't have picked up on in the camera is the noise, vibration and harshness of these engines. Surprisingly good. Now there's a good throaty sound, and particularly when you come on throttle and you hear that turbo spool up, but once you're at that sweet spot around that 3000 RPM, it's actually nice and quiet. 
Now on board, the feel, really good. The usability of the EVC, fantastic. You will have seen how easy it was to dock. All in all, this combination from CMEC in this repower, fan bloody tastic. So Britt, how did you end up on the 4100? It's a long story, which I'll try to be short. So I had a, a trailer boat and then I moved onto the water. Um, we didn't use the trailer boat as much because it was a pure fishing, it was a Haines Hunter thing, and didn't use it as much, like only doing like 40 hours a year. Um, and then we wanted to do some more, I got two young boys and just some more family time type things. So I um, started the journey, found a, uh, a noosa cat down in South Australia that was going to um, repower and stuff like that. And um, yes, yeah, so that sort of started the journey on to the cats and stuff like that. And then. Um, had it out of the water, used it for 12 months, really liked it, did some trips. It had some old, very old Volvos in it, like really slow and underpowered, um, but they were at the end of their life. And so I pulled the boat, we pulled the boat and, uh, and had a chance meeting at the Century Boat, um, Century Cove Boat Show yep. um, and met Andrew down there and yep. um, talked about, yeah, I was just talking to different engine manufacturers about uh, because originally I was going to do the outboards. Oh, on, on this boat? No, on the smaller boat. Yep. I had the, the Nooster Cat before was a 1050, and we were going to put some outboards on it type thing. So I talked to him and, you know, just went down that path and then just did some investigation and it was obviously going to not upset the balance of the boat by, yep. because moving fuel tanks and yep. building transoms and yeah, pods, pods and stuff like that. So it was yep. going to be a fair task, yep. which we went down because um, Scotty here with me today, he's a pattern maker and very fiberglass orientated, so that didn't scare me, but it was more about the balance of the boat and yeah. reckoning how the boat went in the water yeah. type thing, so. So what, what settled you on the 440s? Because there were 330s in it before? Uh, the 440s came about when I'd already, I'd, from that meeting with Andrew, we bought the D4 320s, and then we went from there, the boat stripped, the boat just about to put them in, and then this boat came up on the market and um, it just had a few, it was a newer shape um, from speaking to a lot of people, the 4100. This is the one. This is the boat, yeah. 4100. Yeah. I could put the bigger engines in because it had a bit more volume in the bum. Yep. And so we're like, okay, this has got bigger fuel tanks, bigger range. And instead of the 320s, I could get the 440s, yeah. which happened to come out of another, it was like a chance sequence of events that happened that were already bought by a, uh, an orthopedic surgeon doctor that yep. he had a problem with the Whirlcat and he'd already bought them top thing. So they were in Brisbane already, they were at the CMAC office. and So they fell into your hands, basically? Just, the whole the thing the whole, just came together. The whole thing came together. Beautiful. But with a lot of work, obviously, putting other boats back together and yeah. selling and doing this one top thing. Yeah. And in terms of your first 100 hours, because I understand you've now got about 100 on the clock, how have they been? Yeah, we've done a lot of trips, obviously. Like, it's only been six months or seven months since we've got them back in the water. And um, we've loved going north type yep. thing and up, up to Double Island and spending time there and yeah we've really really enjoyed it type thing and you know just the speed compared to the old ones incredible. Now you've got 2,000 litres of fuel on board and obviously you've got enough space for the kids and bits and pieces so you overnight on this when you got to Double yeah, Island? Yeah we do about four days. Yeah four generally. at a time? Yeah yep. Yep. four days three nights yeah that's a, yeah water and stuff like that we could probably go a bit longer but you know like that four's enough for the kids. Ticks every box type thing so there's yep. a lot of stuff to do up there but yeah yep. and obviously we want to go further north yeah type thing and do some Yep. Do some fishing up north and stuff like that. And then what's next for the boat? Oh, there's a lot to do. We've done mechanically, and it's a, it's good mechanically, but um, obviously the aesthetics is not great on it type thing, so it needs a bit of work, but we... Spit and polish. Just got tired of um, tired of working on it and not using it. Yep. So we're going to use it for a couple of years and then, you know, try and... Um, and obviously the, the times it has on a builder, so it hasn't really been... Um, great times so yeah we're just happy it's a great escape and great time to get away and stuff like that so beautiful